Our top story this hour, Iran's judiciary chief Ebrahim Raisi says harsh revenge awaits those behind the assassination of top Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. The one who is the U.S. president as a murderer and those who have uh, the perpetrators of this crime, they will not have security on this planet. This is something definite and the resistance front will take a harsh revenge from them. Raisi was speaking at a ceremony marking the first anniversary of the U.S. assassination of General Soleimani. He said the U.S. president for or anyone else as a murderer will not be immune from Iran's revenge. Raisi also said that the assassination of anti-terror commander Soleimani will fail to undermine the resistance front. The head of the Quds Force of Iran's Islamic Revolution Guards Corps also addressed the gathering. Brigadier General Ismail Ghanani also said uh, that Soleimani was the hero of defeating arrogance. General Soleimani was killed in a U.S. drone attack in Iraq on January the 3rd, 2020. I'll be discussing this issue a little bit further with the panel who joined me at this point of the program. Luckily, I have my own professor on the line with me, Sayed Mohammad Manan, the university professor and political analyst who joins us via Skype out of Tehran. Professor, as always, it's good to see you. Mm. Uh, and uh, Mr. Tim Anderson, he is the director with Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies. He joins us via Skype out of Sydney. Gentlemen, it's good to have you with us. Let me begin with Professor Manan in Tehran about how he feels things have turned a year on since the assassination of these two great gentlemen. Professor please well as we move forward we are seeing more clearly the role that the United States has been playing in creating Isis and al-qaeda in Syria just recently we've been uh, informed by WikiLeaks and Julian Assange basically that um, Jake Sullivan who is the incoming U.S. National Security Advisor. In other words, he's going to be playing the role that Bolton did just a year ago. He sent an email to Hillary Clinton on February the 12th, 2012, that in Syria, Al-Qaeda is on our side. And at that time, Al uh, ISIS was, was Al-Qaeda. It was, it was one organization, and they split away later on. So the United States was on the same side as Al-Qaeda, despite the fact that Western media was constantly pretending that they had nothing to do with the extremists. And they were even trying to claim repeatedly that the Syrian, cover, the Syrian government was working with these extremists. If people go back and read the New York Times or The Guardian, and other major Western media outlets, even the so-called liberal media, they'll see that ISIS and Al-Qaeda, their activities were attributed to the Syrian government by Western media as fake news in order to create a diversion away from the fact and from people questioning the U.S. role in Syria. The U.S. role in Syria was to support the extremists against the Syrian government. So General Soleimani is really the hero of West Asia in that he helped the Syrian people, the Syrian army, the Iraqi people and the Iraqi army and the popular mobilization forces and Hezbollah to coordinate to defeat this menace. And if he had not helped to defeat this menace in Syria and Iraq, even, the, even Erdogan, who had been supporting these extremists, would be under threat today. Even the Saudi regime today would no longer exist. The same regimes that worked alongside the United States to create this menace, today they would either be non-existent or destabilized. So I think that even those who oppose him should be thankful to him. Tim Anderson in Sydney, to what uh, do you get along with that? What do you have to add to this? Yes, it's um, uh, Professor Morandi has spelled out usefully the background there. Of course, the role of the US in supporting Daesh and the other groups in Syria has been admitted in a series of um, revelations. Remember the, the, the DIA document of August 2012, which Michael Flynn's organization said that it suited the US purposes for 
a Salafi caliphate in the east of Syria and that the insurrection was led by extremists. Then in 2014, we had a series of admissions from the then Vice President Biden and the head of the US Army, uh, Martin Dempsey, that all of their allies were supporting and funding all of the terrorist groups and Daesh. I think what uh, the uh, General Soleimani uh, embodies for us is not just a symbol now of resistance, but as has been said by others, a school of thought in the resistance. And we have now, we are able to move on, I think, from the characterization of how the, the, the dirty war, the hybrid wars of the 21st century in West Asia were carried out, and to study uh, the life of Soleimani, who's been called rightly a, a living school of thought, and I would say a leading school of thought, not the, the only school of thought, but a living and leading school of thought in a university of the resistance. And I think that we should it, turn our attention now to some of the lessons from that broad university of the resistance. What lessons may they be, uh, Professor Marandi and Tehran? And of course, what I'm very curious to know from, from you is uh, we have actually passed uh, one year without uh, General Soleimani. Of course, we had the coronavirus and so many other issues um, entangling us basically you know, within the year 2020. But what of a world without General Soleimani? What of a West Asia without him? In what direction are we moving? Well, I would also like to add that uh, the U.S. Secretary of State at the time, Kerry, said in a private conversation to the so-called Syrian activists who were working for the Americans that the United States allowed ISIS to advance on Damascus in order to put pressure on the government. Mm. And Obama also, I think, in an interview with The Atlantic, said that the United States allowed ISIS to advance on Baghdad to put pressure on the then Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki. So this is the, the degree to which the, the regime in Washington will play with fire and to behave in the, the most despicable manner in order to achieve its goals. And I think that part of this broader, let's say, uh, education that we've received during this period is that you cannot appease the United States and survive. You cannot give uh, the United States or its allies concessions and expect them to change their behavior. The, this is a regime that 10 years after 9-11, and 9-11 was a result of their own policies in Afghanistan. It was blowback from them. But 10 years after 9-11, the, the war they, and the, the start of the war on terror, which was because of 9-11, the excuse was 9-11, mm -hmm. they had aligned themselves, again, according to Jake Sullivan, with the same forces that carried out 9-11. This is how utterly immoral the regime in Washington is. Mm -hmm. And this is not something that any major media outlet in the West will discuss or talk about. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the, the thing that we have to learn from this is that you cannot appease Washington. You must be strong in the face of imperialism. Mm -hmm. You must be strong in the face of neocolonialism. And that is the only way that independent countries can survive. A year after the murder and assassination of General Soleimani and Abu, Ahd, Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis, what the West needs to learn is that nothing will change in mm -hmm. Iran. It is only going to become worse for them. Because in their, in their Orientalist mindset, they think that countries like Iran are dependent on people. Mm -hmm. Iran is a sophisticated country with, with a sophisticated uh, people and a sophisticated uh, political establishment and constitution. These are sophisticated structures that exist and they will not be dented because of the murder of a, one person or another. We have to remember that after Ayatollah Khomeini, Imam Khomeini passed away, within hours the constitution, the constitutional body that was designed to choose the leader chose Ayatollah Khomeini. Mm -hmm. And the country continued to move forward and advance. General Soleimani was a great figure, but, and he will be dear, he will be missed, but, the, the structures of the Islamic Republic of Iran will continue to function mm -hmm. and competent 
people will continue to push the United States back, for, back and they will do it with greater vigor because the United States has to be punished for its impudence. And perhaps with a taste of vengeance. Uh, now, final comments from Tim Anderson. To what extent do you also uh, support what Professor, uh, Professor Marandi said, or do you have something against it? You know, just bear in mind that uh, a lot of people, like Professor Marandi, uh, argue that uh, a lot of the mistakes that have been made on the part of uh, the West is because they haven't really studied the sophisticated structure of countries uh, like Iran. Do you really think that is the case to you, and uh, the fact that under any pretext? that they committed this crime, do you really think that they will meet their goals, they will gain those goals? I don't think they will even learn their lessons um, in the short term. But I think what's important about the life of uh, General Soleimani is that he was the first genuine regional leader of the resistance. Now, he was an Iranian general, it's true, reporting to his leader. But he trained commanders across the region. And we see now the combination of those forces. With Soleimani, was said to have a major role in drawing Russia into the resistance, for example. Um, but Soleimani's role in Lebanon, in Palestine, in Syria, in Iraq, uh, established him as the leader of the resistance. And the important thing there is that coming together is the way to defeat the big powers effectively. And we've seen in recent times the huge economic uh, agreements being signed between Iran and China, we've seen that there is now a new financial mechanism between Syria and Iran. Uh, the most recent news is that Cuba and Iran are collaborating to produce a COVID-19 vaccine and large-scale trials have begun mm -hmm. are beginning in Iran this month. So I think it's precisely that sort of cooperation between countries that are jointly under this type of siege, under this type of aggression, are coming together. And I think that's where the real force and the real lessons of the regional and even the, the international resistance can be seen. Many, many thanks to you both, gentlemen. Sayed Mohammad Marandi, university professor and political analyst uh, via Skype out of Tehran. Mr. Tim Anderson, director for Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies out of Sydney. I really appreciate the time you gave us.